Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Patch 3.2.1F on the PTU confirmed that ship cannon weapons are now going to be semi-automatic, or at least they're trying it out. And it is a design choice rather than a bug. So let's talk about that and the other changes in the 3.2.1F PTU patch. Malagos started a thread on Spectrum. Change to auto fire slash semi auto cannons is awful. In every 3.2.1 PTU patch so far, players must click or pull the trigger to fire every shot. Initially, we were told this was a bug, but today we found out it was intentional. This change has a large negative impact on gameplay. Some weapons, like the M4, a, fire more than twice per second. Even slower weapons like the neutron cannons fire more than once per second. Having to click every 0.461 seconds is impossible and extremely aggravating. Think of a fleet action where hornets are trying to take out a retaliator before it kills their Idris. Every shot, every second counts. In a top tier dogfight, pilots might only have one to two seconds of a firing solution. So if they can get over three shots instead of four using a macro, they'll do that. That's all we're accomplishing here, creating an inhuman barrier for entry on dogfighting. I actually really rate Malagos as one of the most knowledgeable people on stats and ship combat. He does have very critical opinions on bits he doesn't like though, and at least draws attention to them. I don't agree with everything that he always says or anything like that, but he does normally have some at least good points. CIG's John Crew posted an official reply. Just wanted to chime in here that this is an intentional change. The plan for a long time was to move towards this part of more work being done on the weapons, intended to push them into various categories to promote differences and user choice slash preference between them, rather than gun A is just a slower firing version of gun B. The intention for cannons are these are the high damage, high risk weapons that require accuracy and timing to align and fire with versus other weapon types which fulfill different roles. Think of them as the DMR sniper equivalent in a traditional FPS shooter to the repeater fulfilling the automatic weapon area. And no, before anyone says it, we're not dumbing down the experience to make the space combat system like an FPS in space. That's just an easy example. Circling back around to the issue at hand, all the cannons should have been converted to semi-automatic with 3.2. Some of the less frequently used ones were missed, giving the impression it was a bug. This is fixed in the next slash current PTU patch. We are aware of the issue where if you re-trigger before the cooldown period, it doesn't let you fire. That is an issue we're looking to solve, but most likely won't be in the 3.2.1 patch. When fixed, you'll still need to release and re-trigger to fire again, but there will be a less of a penalty if you miss the timing. We are aware that a lot of ships have cannons by default, and this is being reviewed as to whether all ships have the most appropriate loadouts by default available to them, including weapon group assignments, mixed, fixed, and gimbal options. We are aware that stick users are particularly impacted by these changes at the moment. The above should mitigate them when implemented. Lastly, we want to ensure that all weapon types are valid combat choices, be it cannons, repeaters, scatterguns or others, and that to be effective with each requires different techniques to learn and master. In the past, users have flocked to a certain type of weapon because it's been the best choice, usually because of bugs or balance, and have become attached to those ways. Whilst this change is intentional, it doesn't mean that it will stay exactly like it is and main change one way or another. Going forwards, we now have more staff available to actively work on this area, so expect more changes across the board, vehicle and FPS, in terms of weapon tuning and behaviours. So, personally, I think it's too soon to say whether it's a bad choice or not, but the joy of Star Citizen is that we can play with it, give our feedback and opinions, and get it changed if it sucks or doesn't add anything to what we want. It's the people's voice and the people's opinion, and people like Malagos, it's great that they give their opinion on this and at least draw attention to it so people can focus and look at it. So let's take a look at the rest of the patch notes for 3.2.1F on the PTU. It still has a focus on turret combat against AI and players, and other than the semi-auto cannon changes, it's actually just bug fixes. The 600i should no longer run out of power while flying in atmosphere. The Urza Rover should no longer run out of power when shooting. The Hurricane turret should now be able to fire while the shields are recharging. 
They fixed weapon groups on the 350R, so semi-auto weapons are not grouped with full auto ones. The Freelancer should now be able to fire its weapons while recharging its shields. They altered the weapon groups to, on the Buccaneer to avoid mixing semi-auto with auto fire again. They altered the power on the Scythe and Glaive so they can fire the size 5 weapons more reliably. The Reclaimer should now no longer quickly overheat when in combat scenarios. The Avenger should now be able to fire while its shields are recharging. The Mustang series should no longer overheat quickly or get stuck in an overheat loop. The default weapons of the Super Hornet should now be able to be fired without losing power. The heat sink component should no longer be visible on the VMA. The bridge of the Caterpillar should no longer be stuck in a low light state. Star Marine control terminals should now once again work normally. Party member AR markers should no longer be reflected. They fixed an issue where the Starfarer rear turret gunners didn't have the ability to control their radar. All port slots should no longer be duplicated in the VMA. Manned turrets should now properly stabilize when their parent ship is moving vertically. The aim reticle should no longer remain stationary for cutlass turrets. There was a fix for erratic turret motion and over-aggressive target snapping. The Starfarer and Constellation series turrets should now properly function. Players should no longer become stuck in the turret seat on occasion. Turrets should now work regardless of zone, including around planetary bodies. Stagger fire modes should now function on turrets correctly. And they do function correctly. A stagger fire mode on turrets is actually a really, really good thing. And um, because you want, like if you're in a hurricane, you may want each of its guns firing after the other in succession uh, when you hold the button down. And that sort of um, staggered fire is, can be really effective or trying to shoot fast ships and that sort of stuff. There was a little bit of insight given into Star Citizen's Persistent Universe's maintenance and AWS servers and how they sort of work and use them. A thread on Spectrum by Mojave Viper titled, Is Server Maintenance Happening Currently? Which asked, when 3.2 first hit, everything was running amazingly, high frames per second, low bugs, and AI were kind of challenging to engage. Since then, it's beginning more bugs, low FPS, etc., on a seemingly daily basis. Bearded CIG responded, depends on what you're referring to as maintenance. Typically, most MMO games consider server maintenance to be a period of time where they take an environment down to do some back-end work. I can imagine that these maintenance windows typically encompass work such as updates to the server operating systems, chipset drivers, preparation for patch releases, etc., and then checking to make sure that the updates haven't caused an unexpected problem with the functionality of the game. Most companies tend to do this on a weekly or bi-weekly basis and have to take down their game environment to do so. The added bonus of doing this maintenance along with associated downtime is that turning things off and back on again often help with a wide variety of issues. At least in regards to that model, we don't take down our entire environment to do updates like that since we're using AWS cloud infrastructure. Since the game is in cloud rather than having to take game servers offline to update them, we can bring up a new set of servers with the updates and then swap them with the old ones as they empty out. We can't do that with everything though. For example, if we wanted to do some maintenance for some things related to database, it can be difficult to impossible to play the game without running into issues since the game servers might not be able to get data for player items depending on what part of the system needed maintenance. Situations where we've had to do that have been pretty rare. Because of the fact that we don't take down the entire environment to do this kind of maintenance, and thus also don't end up regularly starting everything, we have to tool the backend services team provided to us DevOps, which allows us to mark game servers with a flag that will restart them as soon as they are empty. This helps out with a variety of issues, such as weird states that the server might be in, stuff that doesn't get cleaned up, causing performance issues, memory usage, etc. I just thought that would be interesting to know for some as they continue to evolve the server infrastructure and how they do things. It's nice to see how they deal with servers currently and how that's going to change over time. Obviously, when they have a much more complex infrastructure with server meshing and stuff like that they can literally switch servers in and out and move them around and as they empty out they can restart parts and areas of that 
and which will hopefully make for all much more stable services over a longer period of time because they can just restart them when they empty out. Now, it does beg a question, how is this going to work with server meshing and object container streaming? Does that mean that individual sections of a system can literally just be restarted for the servers or does is that not actually essential at all because multiple servers can run multiple areas and they can just switch the servers in and out because you're going to have some areas of the verse which don't empty out unless they have regular maintenance that goes offline like the starting system if it's a big trade hub then there's always going to be people like that like in Jita in, in eve they have to restart those servers so it's going to be interesting it'll be interesting to see how server meshing and object container streaming deals with that because you might just be able to go well we just get a new server in and, and it's effectively fresh but it just transfers all the old data across maybe that's enough as object container streaming is coming in 3.3 in september and it looks like we're going to have server meshing by the very end of the year at the end of december in 3.4 it's something that they need to start considering but tell me what you think down below be sure to check out Shadow. It's a cloud-based alternative to getting or upgrading your gaming PC. It allows you to leverage the power of a, a GeForce 1080 at the moment and a powerful Windows 10 PC on almost any device so long as your internet connection is good enough. It works with Star Citizen Alpha 3.2 and with 3.3 coming in September with object container streaming, it's only going to get better. If you do try it out, be sure to use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. Links to more info in the description below. Uh, every month we do have a ship giveaway as well. This time it's for a Drake salvage ship, the Vulture, with an upgrade to a Prospector as well if you so desire. Donated by Forgotten Heralds, a lawful private military org focused on in-game training and operations that they run regularly now in-game. They're going to be very heavily focused on contracts in the future as well. They are very active and friendly, being appropriate for veterans and new players alike like check them out below for lots and lots of information including a spotlight if you are interested to be in for a chance of winning that vulture though make sure you're subscribed to my youtube channel and comment on any of my videos during this month each video gives you another chance to win